In this video, I'm going to talk about my smart home costs. I'll take you through how much I've spent on my smart home product in each room of my house. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll share with you how much my total spend has been. And it was more than my first car cost. Hi everyone, welcome to Project Smart Home. My name is Paul, I hope you're doing well. As you may already know from my previous videos, I've been building my smart home for a few years now. I've used various smart home platforms, but today I'm using Home Assistant. As you might be able to tell from the t-shirt, I'm a bit of a fan. I use Home Assistant to manage my smart home products and to create my home automations. I plan to make more in-depth videos talking you through my smart home products and how I use automations to make my life easier. However, that's for another day. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how much I've spent. I hadn't really thought about this before until I started writing the script for my previous video where I talked about my project smart home journey so far. So I thought it would be interesting to document how much I've spent and share it with you. Before I get into the costs, a little bit about my house. I live in the south of England in a four bedroom bungalow with my wife, three kids and two cats. Okay. That's enough about that then. Okay, so let's get on with the exciting bit. I'm going to start with my kitchen as I have to start somewhere, so why not there? So as I go through this, I'll talk you through each smart product that I've got in each room, and then I'll come back to the costs at the end of each section and then summarize the whole thing at the end of the video. So in the kitchen, I've got three hue element lights hanging over the breakfast bar in the kitchen and they're on one lighting zone. I've then got four smart things smart plugs and I use one of those for the dishwasher in the kitchen and two for lights and one for another appliance. I've got two Lifex LED strip lights with extension kits and they light the floor under the cabinets in the kitchen and the worktop as well underneath the cabinets on the wall. I've got one Shelly smart relay and I use that on my four gang light switch that's in the kitchen and I need to use that to control the spotlights that are in the kitchen because they're not smart so I, I make those smart by using the Shelly relay. I've got one Acara FP2 presence sensor. This is brilliant. I think I've said that before in a previous video but I've been able to control three separate lighting zones in the kitchen. So one with the main lights, the down lights, one with the under lighting for the uh, worktop area and then one uh, separate zone for the floor lighting for more LED lighting. And that's all with one Acara FP2, which deten detects um, both motion and presence. I've got an ESP32 and that is used for my Bluetooth detection. So as I walk into the kitchen, assuming I have my mobile phone on me, then that will detect my presence and run some automations. I've also got my Roomba i7 vacuum cleaner and base in this room as well. Um, but obviously that's used throughout the house, but I've decided to include it in the kitchen costs because that's where it lives. I've got one Google Nest Hub Max, which I use for voice control for most of my smart home products. I've got one Amazon Dot. And as I've said before in a previous video, I'm having to use Google and Amazon because the only way I can get the action response working with the ESP32s and ES Presence is using and using Amazon as a platform. So unfortunately, I've got to have both. I've got one Tado thermostatic radiator valve, which I use to control the heating in that room in the kitchen. So when the kitchen gets cold, that single radiator will call for heat and just heat that room, which is brilliant. Uh, the downside is I've also got to have a Tado thermostat on the wall in the kitchen as well, because when the radiator heats up, because it's so close to the TRV, you get kind of a false reading on the TRV. So put a thermostat at the other side of the room, then it uses that thermostat to, to regulate the heat temperature, which gives you a better temperature in that room. I've got two Acara door sensors for my external doors and I use those for making sure we've shut the doors at night and when we leave the house I've got a home assistant uh, alarm that 
I've set up as well. And I've got two smart things door sensors as well, which I use on the fridge and the freezer. So if they're left open for a period of time, I think it's about a minute and a half, then I get a notification on the Googles around the house to say the fridge or freezer has been left open and also a notification on my phone as well. I do plan to run uh, another series of videos that goes into the detail of how I'm using my smart home product and the automations that I'm running as well in each room of the house. So come back for those at another time. From a pricing point of view, the I'll, I'll run through, that, through those now. So the Hue Element Lights, £59.97 for the three of them. The Smart Thing Smart Plugs for four was £119.96. The two Lifex LED strip lights with extension kits was £195.98. The Shelly Smart Relay was £10.83. The Acara FP2 Present Sensor was £82.99. It's quite expensive, but it does a lot. ESP32 was £7.33, and I bought those as a pack of three. I use the other two elsewhere in the house. The Roomba Vacuum Cleaner was £470.20, and £295.99 for the clean base. I've got the Google Nest Hub at £219, Amazon Dot at £29.99, Tado TRV was £64.99, that came as a pack of two. I've got Tado Thermostat which is £79.95 and then I've got the Acara Door Sensors at £28.88 for two and then the Smart Things Door Sensors at £48 for two. And that comes in at a total cost, just for the kitchen alone, at £1,714.06. The next room that I'm going to cover is the dining room. So from a lighting point of view, I have one Philips Hue white wireless bulb in there, which is controlled by a Philips Hue motion sensor, which we're obviously integrated with Home Assistant. I've also got a Nest indoor camera, and I've, got, I've had these for quite a few years. They're quite old now. And I used to use them for just monitoring the kids when they were little in their room and sleeping in their cots at night. And now I just use them as an additional layer of security in the house. And when we go out, then those cameras, indoor cameras, activate and monitor what's going on in the house. Uh, I've also got a Tado TRV, um, which is the thermostatic radi radiator valve for that area of the house. And I've also got a Nest smoke and carbon monoxide alarm which is uh, controlled by a battery also integrated with home assistant so i can get alerts so the cost for these items were 12 pound 49 for the hue the philips hue white wireless bulb 27 pound 24 for the philips hue motion sensor the nest indoor camera was 158 pound 98 the Tado TRV was £64.99, which came as a pack of two, so that's just the cost for one. And the Nest Smoke and Carbon Monoxide Alarm was £96.99. So that gives me a total smart home product cost for the dining room of £360.69. The next room I'm going to do is the utility room. So in here, I've got one Shelly Smart Relay to control the non-smart downlights in that room. I've got a Philips Hue Motion Sensor, which works in Home Assistant with the Shelly Smart Relay to control those downlights. I've got a Google Nest Mini Hub in that room as well. So we use that to tell the washing machine or tumble dryer to be turned on, and they work in conjunction with the two smart things smart plugs that we have plugged into the washing machine and tumble dryer so they're monitoring the energy usage on those appliances if it drops below five watts for five minutes i think it is then we get a notification to say that the tumble dryer washing machine's finished and then the appliance is switched off the cost then for the smart home products in the utility room is 10 pound 83 for the Shelly Smart Relay, £27.24 for the Philips Hue Motion Sensor, £20 for the Google Nest Mini Hub, 
and £59.98 for the two SmartThing Smart Plugs, which gives a total cost of £118.05 for that room. On to the family room, I've got one Philips Hue white wireless bulb in there, which works in conjunction with the Philips Hue motion sensor. I've also got an, one Acara FP1 present sensor, which was the original present sensor released by Acara. You may remember earlier I'm using the FP2 in the kitchen, but I'm only using the FP1, which I had um, lying around that I use in the, the family room now. So what I've done is I've grouped the motion sensor from Philips Hue with the Acara FP1 present sensor to give me a pretty good indication of whether anybody's in the room or not. And then if there's nobody in that room based on motion on presence, then the TV gets switched off and the lights get switched off automatically. I've also got SmartThing Smart Plug, which I use to control the TV and get that to turn off automatically if nobody's in the room. I've also got a Google Chromecast dongle with Google TV. Now, is it isn't it a smart home gadget? I've got it integrated into Home Assistant, so I'm classing it as a, a smart home product. And again, that can be switched on and off and controlled through Home Assistant um, because there's a new integration that's available in a recent release of Home Assistant that allows you to control those Google TV dongles. I've got a Google Nest Mini for voice control of the items in that room. And again, I've got a Nest indoor camera, which again, I've had around for a few years. That's just used and activated when everybody's left the house. One thing that I do have in the family room and I've got also in different parts of the house is the Ubiquiti Unify Wi-Fi network. I've decided not to include the costs here because they aren't strictly smart home product devices. Although that said, I do have them integrated with Home Assistant and I use them to control Wi-Fi access for the kids which is a really useful feature. So if I want to limit access or switch internet access for, off on the kids' devices when it's bedtime, then I can do that. So if people are interested in that, I can do a separate video on how that works and how I'm utilizing that capability. The cost then for the family room is as follows. It's £12.49 for the Philips Hue white light bulb, £27.24 for the Philips Hue motion sensor, £51.31 for the Acara FP1 present sensor. Now I had to buy that from AliExpress because I just couldn't find them anywhere in the UK. But if you are thinking of buying an Acara present sensor, then I would definitely go for the FP2 now anyway, which are available on Amazon if you can get them quick enough. The SmartThings plug was £29.99. The Google TV stick dongle was £39.99. The Google Nest Mini, £20. And the indoor Nest Indoor Camera is £158.98. With a total cost of £340 for the family room. For the hallway, I have two Philips Hue white light bulbs and two Philips Hue motion sensors. So because it's quite a large area to cover, I've got a motion sensor at each end of the hallway. So depending on which direction you're coming from, the appropriate uh, motion sensor will pick you up and turn on both light bulbs. And then I've got two Nest smoke and carbon monoxide alarms in the hallway. Again, large area to cover, so I've got two in there. One's battery and one's wired. The cost then of the hallway smart products are £24.99 for the two Philips Hue white light bulbs, £54.48 for the two Philips Hue motion sensors, £96.99 for the battery operated Nest smoke alarm, and £94.99 for the wired Nest smoke alarm. And that gives me a total cost of £271.45 for the hallway. In the main reception area, main entrance hall, I've got one Philips white light bulb, one Philips Hue motion sensor, I've got a Google Nest Mini 
and a Nest indoor camera and one SmartThings door sensor. One cool automation that I've got that makes use of most of that technology is when Home Assistant detects that somebody's arriving home using the GPS location from the Home Assistant app or the Wi-Fi network and then the door contact is opened, they get a nice welcome home message um, as they come through the door. The cost then for the main entrance reception area is £12.49 for the Philips Hue white wireless bulb, £27.24 for the Philips Hue motion sensor, £20 for the Google Nest Mini, £158.98 for the Nest indoor camera and £24 for the SmartThings door sensor and that's a total of £242.71 for the main reception area. So onto the living room or lounge, I've got three Philips Hue colour light bulbs in there. So I've got two of those in the pendant lights hanging from the ceiling and one in a lamp that's in the room. I've got two Philips Hue motion sensors and two Acara FP1 present sensors. So I'm using the motion sensor and the present sensor together in one group in Home Assistant to monitor the motion and presence in the room. So initially the lights will come on based on the motion but they will stay on based on the presence in the, from those Acara present sensors. I've got a Philips Hue 2 meter LED light strip behind the TV to give some nice ambient color while um, watching TV. I've got a Google dongle Chromecast TV stick. I've got a light wave double smart socket which I've got the TV plugged into and the games console plugged into so I can get those to turn off automatically when people have left the room so when there's no presence detected the TV can be switched off. I've got two TP-Link CASA smart plugs these are really quite old now and probably need replacing. I've got one on my Virgin router so I can turn that on, off and on if needed to if there's an issue and we've got our printer in the lounge as well so that's controlling when that's turned off if it's been left on for a long period of time. I've got a Tado TRV in the living room along with the thermostat so again the TRV controls the room temperature along with the thermostat to give a nice balanced temperature in that room. I've got the TRV and radiator at one side of the room thermostat across the other side of the room. I've got a Google Nest Hub which I obviously use for, for pictures uh, of friends and family and also controlling the smart home products with voice. I've got the ESP32 in that room as well so when I go into the room and it detects my presence based on my mobile phone and the Bluetooth signal it will do run automations that are specific for me and I'm quite excited to cover some of that capability in a later video and then because I'm using ESP32 and the ES presence the only way I've been able to get action response working as I've said before is with the Amazon Echo so I'm having to use that in that room as well. The cost then for the smart home products in the lounge are as follows £127.17 for the three colour Philips Hue light bulbs, £54.48 for the Philips Hue motion sensor, two of those, £102.62 for the two Acara FP1 present sensors, £66.07 for the 2 meter Philips Hue LED light strip, £39.99 for the Google Chrome Stick dongle, £191.20 for the double socket that actually came as a bundle um, from Lightwave that was probably one of the first things I set up so that came with the Lightwave hub the Lightwave double socket and a Lightwave single gang dimmer which I've used elsewhere £39.90 for the TP-Link CASA plugs £64.99 for the Tado TRV 
£79.95 for the Tado thermostat, £219 for the Google Nest Hub Max, £7.33 for the ESP32, and £149.99 for the Amazon Echo. That's a total cost for smart home products in the living room of £1,142.69. For the master bedroom and ensuite, I've bundled those together in one list just to make things easier. I've got one light wave two gang smart dimmer switch and that controls the lights for both the ensuite and the master bedroom. So the master bedroom just has a pendant light in there with a the standard bulb in it and the ensuite has got non-smart spotlights in it. So that smart dimmer switch controls both sets of lights. But there's two separate motion sensors. So I've got a Philips Hue motion sensor in the bedroom for the light in there. And then the Acara P1 motion sensor, not to be confused with the FP1 presence sensor, which I've got elsewhere. So it's just the motion sensor in the ensuite from Acara. I'm starting to buy the Acara motion sensors where needed because they, they provide just as good capability as Philips Hue and as you can see from this that the, they are cheaper. I've got a, a light wave single smart socket in the bedroom which the TV is plugged into so uh, I can get that to turn off automatically if I'm lying in bed and I've forgotten to turn it off and I can switch it off automatically when, uh, when I've fallen asleep. I've got the Google Nest Hub in the bedroom. Again, not the camera version. We don't want any cameras in the bedroom. Uh, I've got, again, the Tato TRV and thermostat in that room. So I've got nice temperature control for that room. I've got the ESP32. So again, if I'm walking in there, detects my mobile phone, it can then ask me what I want from the room, such as turn the TV on, lights on, etc. And again, because I'm using the ESP32 with ES Presence, with Home Assistant, I'm using the Amazon Dot to do that question response. The pricing then for the master bedroom and ensuite is as follows. £114.99 for the two gang smart dimmer switch from Lightwave. £27.24 for the Philips Hue motion sensor for the master bedroom. £21.24 for the Acara P1 motion sensor for the ensuite. £37.50 for the Lightwave single smart socket controlling the TV. £44.99 for the guest hub. £64.99 for the Tado TRV. £79.95 for the Tado thermostat, £7.33 for the ESP32 and £34.99 for the Amazon Dot. That gives us a grand total for that room of £433.22. For bedroom two then we've got Lightwave single smart socket which we use for controlling the TV and we can control when that's switched off at night and can't be switched back on again. A Philips Hue motion sensor to control the lights. Lightwave smart dimmer switch which works in conjunction in home assistant with the motion sensor. We've got the very nice Philips Hue Go uh, which we use as a, a night light. It's a colour portable lamp that we actually use as a night lamp in the kids rooms. We've got a Google Nest Hub, again with no camera, we don't want those in the bedroom. And then we've got the two Tado devices, we've got the TRV and the thermostat, which means that I can control the temperature in that room better. The cost of the items are as follows, £37.50 for the Lightwave single smart socket, £27.24 for the Philips Hue motion sensor, I haven't put a price against the Lightwave Smart Dimmer Socket Switch because that actually came with the hub in a starter pack, so there's no price for that one. Philips Hue Go Night Light is £69, £44.99 for the Google Nest Hub and £64.99 for the Tado TRV, £79.95 for the Tado Thermostat 
which gives a room total of £323.67. Not far to go now, just a few rooms left. So this brings me on to bedroom three. So one lightwave single smart socket in the bedroom for controlling the TV, one Philips Hue motion sensor that we use in conjunction with the lightwave smart switch dimmer to control the non-smart down lights. We've got a really cool nano leaf shapes smart light that uh, we've got on the bedroom wall there, which, which is brilliant. I might do a review of those at a later stage. We've got the Google Nest Hub, which the kids use them for looking at photographs and listening to music and general Google questions and probably helping them with their homework. And then the two Tado devices, the TRV and the thermostat to control the room temperature. The pricing then for bedroom three smart products is £37.50 for the Lightwave single smart socket, £27.24 for the Philips Hue motion sensor, £47.96 for the Lightwave smart dimmer switch, £138.59 for the Nano Leaf shapes, £44.99 for the Google Nest Hub, £64.99 for the Tado TRV, £79.95 for the Tado thermostat, and that gives us a total room cost of £441.22. On to the last bedroom, then bedroom four, and probably at this stage you've seen a lot of consistency and familiar products being used across the house. I basically found products that I like to use and applied a consistent approach to, to what I'm doing. I think some of the things like the Philips Hue motion sensors I'm starting to replace with the Acara stuff because it's a bit cheaper and it's, it's just as good if not better as the, the Philips smart home stuff. So in bedroom four we've got the Lightwave single smart socket for controlling the TV, Philips Hue motion sensor to control the light, We've got the Lightwave Smart Dimmer Switch to control the light with the motion sensor. We've got the Philips Hue Go, which I'm using as a night light. The extra thing that I've got in this room that you haven't seen before is the Acara E1 Roller Shade Driver. I'm planning on getting two more of these for the other kids' bedrooms. I've had this a couple of weeks now and it's pretty good. I'm happy with it so far. I'll let you know in a future video how I'm getting on with it. We've then got the Google Nest Hub and the two Tado devices, the TRV and the thermostat. The cost for bedroom four is £37.50 for the Lightwave single smart socket, £27.24 for the Philips Hue motion sensor, £47.96 for the Lightwave smart dimmer switch, £69 for the Philips Hue Go night light, £47.99 for the Acara E1 roller shade driver, £44.99 for the Google Nest Hub, £64.99 for the Tado TRV, and £79.95 for the Tado thermostat, which gives us a room total of £419.62. On to the last area that I want to talk about, which is outside of the house, so front and back garden lighting and various bits that I've got outside. So at the front door, I've got the Nest Video Doorbell, which is a great device. It streams the doorbell feed to the Google devices with a display that I've got around the house so I can see who's at the door and decide to answer or not. I've got Nest security cameras, the outdoor versions at the front and back of the house so I can monitor um, access and movement. I've got two Philips Hue appear white and color wall lights which are really nice up down lights on either side of the front door so that's quite cool for um, being able to use different colors different times of the year especially around halloween i've got five hue luca outside lights so these are wall mounted lights that i have on various parts of the garage so as we're coming onto the drive the light comes on and then as we walk down the side of the garage, there's another one of those lights there, another couple at the front of the house and a couple at the back. So the house is well lit, whether people are coming to the front of the house, leaving the house or going into the back garden. I've got a couple of the Philips Hue Luca pedestal garden lights down the side of the house as well. 
and three Philips Hue outdoor motion sensors. So as I just mentioned, I've got one of those on the driveway. As we bring the car into the drive, then the lights will come on if it's night. I've got a motion sensor at the front door. So as we're leaving the building, leaving home, the lights will come on so we're well lit on our way out and the same for the back garden, any movement in the back garden and the outdoor lights come on. I've got one Acara door sensor, which I've got on my roller garage door. If one of the forgetful people in the house leave it open, I can get a notification via home assistant to say that the garage roller door has been left open. And then I've got a smart thing smart plug that I've put in the garage. And the reason I've done that it doesn't serve any other purpose other than to extend my Zigbee network into the garage so I can use my door roller sensor. And I plan in the future to put my LED strip lights that are in the garage onto a Shelly smart switch as well. The cost for the outside items is as follows. It's £129.95 for the Nest video doorbell. It's £319.98 for the two Nest outdoor security cameras. It's £258 for the Philips Hue door lights that I've got on either side of the door. It's £324.95 for the five Philips Hue Luca outside lights. £179.98 for the Philips Hue Luca pedestal lights. £152.55 for the Philips Hue outdoor motion sensors, £14.44 for the Acara door sensor for the garage, £29.99 for the smart things plug that I've got in the garage. So that gives us a total of £1,409.84 for the outside smart products. Okay, so the bit that you've all been waiting for, you've, you've sat through all the different rooms in the house and all the different devices I'm using. I've tried to give you a brief description of how I'm using those different devices around rooms in the house. What I'm going to do in the future is go into much more detail, talk you through the products, and give you some examples of how I'm using automations to, to make life easier using those products. So drum roll please, the total cost of all of the smart home products that I have running in my house today is £7,217.22. As I said at the start of the video, that's significantly more than I spent on my first car. I hope you found this video really useful. I've certainly enjoyed making it. It's um, been a certain eye opener from a cost point of view. If you've got any questions or comments about anything I've shown in this video, if you'd like to know more about the products that I'm using or help me with some ideas for future videos, then please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for your time. Bye for now.